Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. the memory of the plainsmen, the restless men of the cattle trails and boom towns of the young west, and to those who still hold America's frontiers, this performance of the Cavalcade of America is dedicated. <laughs> Tonight, the Cavalcade of America presents an original musical melodrama, Wild Bill Hickok, The Last of Two-Gun Justice, written by Peter Lyon, and featuring an original ballad especially composed and sung by Woody Guthrie, famous for his Dust Bowl ballads. Starring in the role of Wild Bill Hickok is Kenneth Delmar from the Cavalcade Players. The part of Sarah is played by Jeanette Nolan, the mayor by William Pringle, Tom Custer by John McIntyre, Hudson by Howard Smith, McCandless by Edwin Jerome, and Calamity Jane by Agnes Moorhead. Our orchestra and original musical score are under the direction of Don Voorhees. DuPont, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, present Wild Bill Hickok on the Cavalcade of America. <laughs> that are gone when your rambling was rough and your law was your gun when your life was a gamble make it ace deuce or tray and the men of the past made the men of today about the best chance you had was your old 44 cause your gun was your order and your draw was your law some men was cowards and some men was brave, but all of the boys sleep now in their graves. From a quiet country town down in South Illinois come the roughest and toughest of all of the boys. Now his last name was Hickok, first name was Jim, and he liked to ride and hunt and to swim. When he was a boy and all his life long, well, he liked what was right and he hated what's wrong. He was still just 15 when he helped get away a poor Negro slave on an underground railway. Hey, come on. Hey. Oh. Lousy. That was a bullet must, Jim. Sound it like it. What? They're shooting it up. Okay, get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Come on, guys. I sure is obliged what you're doing for me, Master Jim. Keep quiet and get a look behind us. Yeah, sir. Yeah, come on. We's gaining on him, Master Jim. Don't call me Master Jim. Ain't nobody a master. <laughs> That's right, Jim. He's still gaining? Looks like it. Huh? I can't see the marshal's gig come back on, there man. for the dust. Go. Hold it, Oh. Well, where are we going, Jim? Duck off the road through this field into them little roads up there. Come I on, can't man. see the marshal yet. Why, we're all right. You never know where we went. Lord, Jim, you's a heap smarter than most grown up men's I know. How old is you, anyway? Old enough. Shucks, I'll be 16 in another eight months. Whoa, Nelly. Whoa. Well, here you are, Sam. Yes, sir. I, I sure is mighty, mighty grateful to you, Jim. You know, that's a funny thing. I reckon that's the first time I was on the receiving end of some bullets. Does so. Sure didn't seem to phase you none. No. I was just thinking. No use to be afraid when you hear them go by. Well, it's a whistling to the left and a whistling to the right. No use to be afraid when you can hear them go by. They was hard-hitting, straight-shooting, hard-fighting men, and Jim met them all at the age of 15. It was old Charlie Hudson was a mule-skinning man. 
Charlie was a bully and the kid called his hand. What are you thinking about, Jim? Hmm? Oh, I was thinking maybe we should have took the back road. But I promised your ma I'd have you home by supper time. Oh, Jim, look out. Someone's going to cross the ditch on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about there. Hey, here comes. Jim, is that big Charlie? Hunt. Yeah, I see him. Hi there, Charlie. Look out, will you? Only one of us can go over that bridge at once. Well, then, looks like it'll be us. Hey, get just a minute. Come on, get Oh, oh, Nelly. Oh. oh, Jim, look out with him. Horse, I'll kick him right off the bridge. Jim, don't let him make no trouble. Don't worry. Uh, I can see you need to learn some respect for your elders and betters, Hickok. Charlie, I reckon you'd better take your hands off my heart. Oh, you do, do you, son? Well, all right, I'll just use my foot there. All right, Hudson, you asked for it. Jim. Why, you... Oh. Oh. Wowie! Knocked him clean through the rail and into the water. How you like that? Jim. Huh? Jim, where is he? That's right. He ain't come up. There ain't even any bubbles come up. Oh, Jim, maybe you killed him. Well, I couldn't have. Just a clip on his jaw, I couldn't have. Uh, Bess, you run into town and fetch help quick. Well, what are you going to do, Jim? I'm off. I'm scared maybe he hit his head on the rail. I'm getting out of here. i got to run away. Oh, Jim, no. Maybe I killed him. I'm heading for Kansas, alone. Well, Charlie hit the river, didn't come up on time, so the kid lit a shove for the old Kansas line. Now Kansas was new and Kansas was tough and Mr. McCandless thought that Hickok would bluff. And a Mr. McCandless thought that Hickok would Come on in. Doors always unlocked. Jim, I rode as fast as I could to let you know. Well, howdy, Sarah. I sat down. You look to be as out of breath as a hummingbird. Jim, Dave McCandless is on his way over here now with two of his men. Jim Woods and Jim Gordon. On his way over here? What's he up to? He claims he hasn't been paid all the money agreed on for the express station. Says he's going to shoot it out with you. Shoot it out with me? Doesn't sound like Dave. Why, after all, he got me my job here with the Pony Express. Jim, you know he's a rebel and you're from the north. Well, that's not a shooting affair yet, is it? And, uh, Sarah, besides, uh, why are you coming here to tell me all this? Aren't you still sweet on him? Well, sure I am. I, I just don't want him to get hurt. Uh-huh. Well, I, I just don't remember you worrying your head, especially, about him getting hurt before this. You sure you haven't got anything else on your mind? You, Jim. Me? I... I couldn't stand it if you were to get shot, Jim. Why, Sarah, I... Oh, Jim, I... I thought you knew. Ever since that... Come in. Howdy, Dave. Seems like you're in a hurry. Come alone. What you doing here, Sarah? Get out. Now, you oughtn't to speak to a lady so short, Dave. People get to thinking you're rude. You got any call to Buddy and Hickok? I'm not talking to you. Sure you are, Dave. Talking right to me. Keep on. All right, then, I will. What about the rest of the money I was owed for this express station? I come to collect. Well, now, the story I get is that you've been paid off, Dave. You talk to the United States government about it. I'm talking to you now. I'm not interested in that United States. Jim, behind you, look out! Jim, you... I saw him coming. You couldn't. You haven't got eyes in the back of your head. They was reflected in the window there. Well, thanks for warning me anyhow. Jim, you got to get out of here. Quick. They'll call it murder. The law will be down on you. Well, I reckon I'll just let the law take its course, Sarah. Oh, Jim, you can't. You know, I'd always thought Dave was quicker on the draw than that. Hmm. Just shows you never can be sure. Yes, 
Kansas was new and Kansas was tough and Mr. McCandless thought that Hickok would bluff. He blowed down McCandless and brought him his in, killed two of his men just a few feet from there. In Kansas, your gun and your draw was your rule, and your big 44 was your college and school. They made Jim the marshal of Independence Town, so he tried to bring law and order around. What's all the fuss about, stranger? Hey, swing party. You want to swing up that old rebel, Jess Walters? But Jess ain't no reb. I know Jess. Runs the Tombstone Saloon. Serves a good drink, too. But he shouldn't do this. Yes? <laughs> Try to stop him now. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Hey, you all. Hey. 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 Yeah. yeah. I thought that'd hold you a little. Now, listen to me, it's spell. I've been living around here some time now, and I see a lot of faces I don't recognize. And I'll bet their faces Jess Wallers don't recognize either. How about it, Jess? Well, I don't know half of them, Jim. Yeah, that's what I thought. Half of you don't even know this man you want to take and string up to a tree. I bet the other half don't even know why you're stringing them up. <laughs> Am I right? That Wallers is a dirty rebel, and he shot Bill Wilson dead. Yeah. I don't know that he did, and I don't know that he didn't. All I do know is this. Lynching never cured nothing. Now, if he killed Bill Wilson, let the law handle it. What we got a law for? I'm sick of folks not paying any heed to the law. It's gonna stop. Or I'm gonna do a little shooting myself to see it does stop. You tell him, Wild Bill! And my name ain't Wild Bill. It is now Wild Bill. It's Wild Bill Hickok! Yeah! Yeah! Lady, she hollered, hooray for Wild Bill, so does Wild Bill Hickok, the name's with him still. Down yonder, the big Civil War had broke out, and Wild Bill is just about the best of the scouts. He scouted around, was a doing just fine, till he arrested him in back of the Confederate line. And they arrested him in back of the Oh, who goes? Who goes? I see you from here, and you're covered. Advance and give the countersign. Yeah, uh, now it's all right, Corporal. I was sent out to scout behind the Yankee line. Give the countersign. Uh, no, you don't understand. I've been on a trip. Two weeks. I wouldn't know Give what... the old countersign, then. Hey, you get your hands high in the air. I know you. Now I get a look at you. Wild Bill Hickok. Now, follow that trail to camp. Got a little court marshal waiting there for you. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thunders and lightnings, the heavens open up, and what do I find? Wild Bill Hickok. Let's see. See, you operated pretty well against us at Pea Ridge, Bill. Yeah? Yeah. There's a paper here that says you shot and killed four out of seven of our men who tried to ambush you. Well, that was five, Colonel. Now you're caught behind our lines again. Well, well. Guess we don't need to go through the formalities of a court-martial for a spy like you. Seems to be plenty of evidence to justify my verdict. Sentry? Yes, sir. Put Hickok in that log cabin back of headquarters under a six-man guard. Give him orders they're not to go inside no matter how hard it rains. He's to be shot at dawn. Yes, sir. Peacock, you know I'm not coming in. Hold it. Oh, come on now. Be reasonable. How about a charge of backer? 
Well, ah, uh, listen, that ain't too much to ask. All right. Just a minute. Here. You want your tobacco? I want that uniform. <laughs> Bill got out of that Confederate calaboose When the big war was over, he went on the loose He slept with the coyotes and rode o'er the plains Rode through the Indians to Kansas again They was outlaws and bad men and rustlers of pity They made him marshal up at old Hayes City And the thumb-busting six-shooters roared all around, but Bill didn't quit till he cleaned up the town. There was outlaws and bad men and rustlers of pity. Tom Custer and his gang was a running Hayes City. Well, Bill, I don't mind saying I'm glad we convinced you to take over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sure looks like a pretty little town. Needs some churches here, but uh, you can't have everything right at first. Churches help to bring order. Yeah, yeah. But I'd say you did, but well. You always carry that many guns? Well, I'll tell you about that. Just at first, it's nice to know you got two in your belt and a third in your hand. People get to thinking maybe you can shoot that many. Ah! Hey, trouble. There comes your first trouble right now. Ah! Who might that untuneful creature be? He's our biggest troublemaker, Bill. And he wears the army uniform. That's General Custer's brother, Tom Custer. He's no killer, just troublemaker. Oh! Hey there, partner. Slow down a spell. Who are you to be ordering around an officer of the army? I'm just a man who aims to live in peace and quiet, partner. I can't do it so easy while you're shooting off them guns. Make my head ache. You aim to live in peace and quiet, huh? You better get out of the road, stranger. Partner, it's you who's going to get out of the road. Get down off your horse before I pull you down. Stranger, it's easy to talk that away with all them guns. What's your name? There are my guns on the road. I still say get off your horse. You're disturbing the peace. Now, if you want to know my name, it's Hickok. They call me Wild Bill. Why, sure, Bill. Uh, I heard tell of you. What do you mind to do with me? Just let you cool off in the jailhouse a spell, Custer. I don't care none about your uniform or your brother. I just care that you keep the peace. Be easy, boys. He walks down the street every night about seven on his way to Co Saloon. Fred, you lay over by the general store, and Mike and Joe will be up the block a piece. All right. When he gets right even with the store, we can all start. You'll never know what hit him. Well, I don't like it. It's cold blood. No, it's not. I'll stand out in the middle and challenge him. Just remember when I say, want to try and lock me up again, Hickok. You all step out and start shooting. Four against one. Don't seem right. You're protecting me, ain't you? Ain't nobody gonna shoot him in the back. Come on, let's go. Hi, Bill. Howdy, ma'am. Oh, Bill. Yeah? Feeling lucky this evening? Why not, Tom? Why shouldn't I, Tom? Oh, it's just that a man like you needs all the luck he can get, that's all. What's on your mind, Custer? Are you aiming for more trouble? What if I was? Want to try and lock me up again, Hickok? <laughs> Reckon I won't have to try, Tom Custer. <laughs> It 
was three Custer bullies that Bill blowed down And Bill didn't quit till he cleaned up the town Yes, the good boys was tough and the bad men was mean When they made him the law down at old Abilene Mike Williams, his deputy, he killed by mistake And he laid old Phil Coe in his long, lonesome grave Deadwood Town was a gold mining place While Bill had a feeling he'd about run his race He sat down to poker with his hat over his face And he drawed him a handful of aces and eights And he drawed him a hand of aces well, if it ain't Wild Bill Hickok. Calamity Dave. Uh, <laughs> Why, you old <laughs> coward. I haven't seen you since we was in Abilene together. Uh, How have you been? Can't complain, Bill. Can't complain. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, don't let me interrupt your poker game. Go right on. All right, all right. Uh, who's bet? I'll just stand here a little. You bump you too. I'm in. I'll pack. Say, Bill, how about your superstition? Thought you never said with your back to the door. Well, I started to move, Calamity. Boys here jawed me out of it. Oh? <laughs> well, you shouldn't play your luck that way, partner. I'll stand behind you for a spell. Uh, well, now, Calamity, no offense, understand, but I get kind of nervous when there's somebody behind me. Yeah, it's your lookout, Bill. I'll buy me a drink. Yeah, do that. And have one for me, Calamity. Sure. <laughs> Am I bet? I'll raise with a couple of blues, Carl. <laughs> You never could bluff with a pig's ear, Bill. I'm throwing in. I'll stay. <clears throat> Seeing you, Bill, what you got? There you are, Charlie. Aces. What happened? Who did it? It was that little guy, drunk, Jack McCall. Shot him right in the back of the head. Bill! That dirty yellow livered coward. Give me Bill's gun. I'll handle him. <laughs> Look what he had. Aces and eights. Chips is his. Yeah. Aces and eats. That's a dead man's hand. Aces and eights was a dead man's hand while Bill had a feeling this would be his last stand. And he set in the game with his back to the door and was shot in the back by little Jack McCall. Calamity Jane saw wild Bill fall and she swore she'd kill that coward McCall. Little Jack made a run, but he run too slow, cause she put him on the go with Bill's 44. Once in the saddle I used to go dashing, once in the saddle I used to go gay. Hometown and I rode to the prairies, got shot down a gambling. I'm dying today. So beat your drum slowly for poor Wild Bill Hickok can play the death march as you carry him along. Take him down to the graveyard and ride on his tombstone. He was shot by a coward you call Jack McCall. The words on Wild Bill Hickok's rude tombstone are weathered and almost too dim to read. A brave man, the victim of an assassin, J.B. Hickok, called Wild Bill, aged 39 years, murdered by Jack McCall, August 2nd, 1876. These words still hold in our memory a fabulous figure who belongs in the great company of immortals in the cavalcade of America. Cavalcade of America thanks Kenneth Delmar and the Cavalcade players for their performance of Wild Bill Hickok, the last of two-gun justice. 
And to Woody Guthrie, our congratulations for his ballad, especially written for this program, a song to enrich the legends of a great American frontiersman. And now the DuPont Company brings you its story from the wonder world of chemistry. When the burial pyramids of the Egyptian kings were opened, the archaeologists found magnificent court robes with the colors still bright, robes which were woven and dyed by people who knew how to bleach their textiles. Only cloth that is bleached takes dye in brilliant glowing colors. How did the Egyptians manage to bleach their goods? We have a clue to the answer in ammonia. Ammonia is used today as the alkalizing agent in bleaching. Where did we get the word? When you ask for a bottle of household ammonia, you are speaking ancient Egyptian. The substance we now know as ammonia was used in bleaching by the priests of Ammon along the Nile who spread their cloth under the blazing Egyptian sun to make it snowy white. Not a surprising thing when you recall that they were priests of a sun god and had a sort of monopoly on the local sunshine. Thousands of years after Egypt became a land of the dead, Dutchmen in Holland and Irishmen in Erin were still bleaching their linen and wool by soaking them in lye and buttermilk and spreading them on the grass in the sun, doing it with a sure knowledge of what would happen, but not knowing why. It wasn't exactly what we'd call a high-speed process. A weaver delivered his goods for bleaching in March and got them back, if he was lucky, toward the end of October. That was one reason clothes cost so much in the old days. DuPont chemists have a clearer idea of what the sun did to turn cloth white. There was oxygen in the dew on the grass and oxygen in the air. The sun split the molecules of oxygen into atoms that were active chemically and the atoms did the job. Most silk, wool, and cotton goods that are to be finished in pastel shades are first bleached in order to ensure clear, bright colors. Rayon silk wool mixtures that furnish us with some of our handsomest fabrics, fabrics that an ancient Egyptian couldn't have imagined, would be impossible without a modern bleaching process. Since bleaching is so important, it was up to the chemist to find a method that wouldn't require all the buttermilk in Holland or all the green old sod in Ireland. What could the chemists make that would yield the same sort of oxygen released by nature on green meadow grass? The answer was found by DuPont chemists in a hydrogen peroxide, not very different from the hydrogen peroxide you have in your home. You know how it bubbles. Well, those fuzzy bubbles are oxygen, the same active molecules of oxygen that are found in dew. Sheets are whiter today. Men's shirts are whiter and wear longer. Wool blankets stay white without turning yellow because DuPont chemists found a way to bring you, in the words of the DuPont Pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. And now the star of next week's program, John McIntyre. Ladies and gentlemen, next week Cavalcade presents a new radio play by Eric Barno. Dr. Franklin goes to court a story of the genial philosopher at a crucial period in our history. Last year, I had the pleasure of playing Benjamin Franklin as a character in a cavalcade drama about Thomas Jefferson. And so I am especially interested in impersonating Dr. Franklin again with a new dramatic emphasis. It's the story of Dr. Franklin's return to public life when he secured vital aid for the American colonies struggling to establish their independence. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is Clayton Collier, sending best wishes from DuPont. This is the National Broadcasting Company.